Welcome viewers to this bilingual reading of two short passages of Alguien Dice Tu Nombre, Someone Speaks Your Name by Luis García Montero, who as many know is one of Spain's most influential and popular contemporary writers, an award-winning poet, novelist, essayist, lyricist, literature professor, and scholar. He's also the director of Spain's Cervantes Institute, which promotes the study of the Spanish language worldwide. My name is Katie King. I've been collaborating with Luis for more than a decade to translate his poetry and prose into English. Today, Luis and I are going to read two short excerpts from Someone Speaks Your Name, Luis's third novel, which I've translated into English that is currently available for publication. It's the story of a young man's awakening to love and politics through literature. The protagonist, Leona Kea, is 19 years old and an inspiring, aspiring writer from a village in Southern Spain. He's just finished his first year studying literature at the University of Granada, and his beloved literature professor has helped him get a summer job selling encyclopedias. As part of his training to be a professional writer, Leon decides to keep a journal writing about his summer experiences, which turn out to be a series of exciting, confusing, and life-changing events. It's 1963 and Spanish society is paralyzed in fear and apathy after decades of Francisco Franco's dictatorship. Political parties are outlawed and any dissent or criticism of the government is quickly quashed. A fearful cautiousness permeates life in Spain, embodied in the phrase uttered repeatedly by Leon's colleague Vicente, I don't need to know about that. Young, naive and passionate, Leon is frustrated and infuriated by what he perceives as society's indifference to the repressive status quo. As he narrates his experiences and opinionated observations through the summer, the reader learns along with him that things are not what they seem. So thank you, Luis, for doing this uh, reading with me. And I have one question for you. Um, this is your third novel but the first to offer North American and UK publishers a full English translation ready for publication. What are the themes and characteristics of this novel that might appeal to English language readers? Un beso eh, y gracias por esta reunión. Eh, es, la novela es la historia de la educación sentimental de un joven durante la dictadura eh, española. So it's a story of uh, the sort of romantic and, and uh, emotional education of a young man during the uh, Spain's uh, Francisco Franco dictatorship. El protagonista eh, estudia, eh, se compromete políticamente y se enamora al mismo tiempo en su primera juventud. In his first uh, youth at the university, he, is, he falls in love, he studies, and he becomes familiar with politics surrounding him. Es una historia eh, que cuenta eh, la libertad en todos sus aspectos. La uh -huh. libertad que sirve para preguntarse sobre uno mismo y para comprender a los demás. This is a story about uh, liberty, freedom, the freedom to understand yourself, but also to understand others around you. Y esa es la gran eh, apuesta de la, de la novela, comprender eh, lo que le ocurre sentimentalmente a alguien que se enamora por primera vez y se compromete con los derechos humanos y con la vida que le falta al país. So, it's a love story, but it's a love story where falling in love helps the individual understand himself and others around him, which is fantastic. Un resumen. <laughs> That's just a summary. Fantastic. Gracias. So let's um, start reading the first excerpt. So in this first passage, Leon, writing in his journal, describes how his colleague Vicente uses names to help sell encyclopedias. This quirky sales strategy begins to develop one of the novel's major themes, the importance of words, names, and stories we tell to gain self-awareness, as well as a larger political and societal understanding. So, Luis, if you would like to read in Espanol. Sí. 
Vicente piensa que algo del nombre y de los apellidos se filtra en el interior de cada persona. El carácter establece relaciones secretas con la forma de llamarnos. El subconsciente, según él, es un pozo de palabras y claro está, los nombres y los apellidos ocupan un lugar importante. Nos bautizamos todos los días a lo largo de la vida al ir al colegio, al pedir alojamiento en una pensión o al encontrar un trabajo. Enamorarse no es más que pintar un corazón con dos nombres. Nunca faltan los nombres. Aunque seamos muy solitarios, oímos nuestro nombre miles, millones de veces. Los primeros que, lo primero que hacemos para escondernos es ocultar nuestro nombre. Lo primero que hacemos para presentarnos es decir nuestro nombre. Por eso conviene pronunciar los nombres muchas veces. Desatan simpatías o miedo. Una relación de dependencia en el inconsciente. El nombre, me explicó en la primera clase práctica, es una buena técnica de ventas. Si visitas a un señor que se llama Baltasar, busca en la enciclopedia la letra B. Mire usted, Baltasar, a ver qué significa su nombre, cuál es su historia. Y luego búscate un país que empiece por B. Vamos a ver, Brasil, qué gran país, cuántos kilómetros. Y luego un animal, buitre, no, mejor búfalo porque a nadie le gusta que lo comparen con un buitre. El búfalo despierta mejores ideas, aventuras, películas del oeste. Y después pasa a la anatomía y destaca la importancia del abrazo. Que empieza por B, como Benedicto XV o Becker o Belmonte, un gran torero, por dar pinceladas de cultura general. ¿Me entiendes? Es el reino de la letra. Y si quieres apretar más el cerco, entérate pronto de la profesión del amable cliente. Porque si es militar, da mucho juego la palabra batalla. Y si es médico, enseguida le buscamos una bata con un apellido bordado. Y si es sacerdote, lo conmovemos con una basílica o con los niños de Biafra. Depende de su carácter. ¿Me entiendes? Todo empieza con el nombre. Fantástico. Ok, let's hear that in English then. Vicente thinks that names and surnames seep into our souls and forge a secret relationship with our personalities. He says the subconscious is a deep well of words where, of course, first names and surnames occupy a very important place. We're called by our names every day of our lives, going to school, checking into a hotel or applying for a job. Falling in love is nothing more than drawing a heart around two names. The names are never missing. Even those of us who are loners hear our names spoken thousands, millions of times. The first thing we do when we want to hide is conceal our names. The first thing we do when we meet someone is speak our name. That's why you should repeat names over and over. It triggers an unconscious relationship of dependency, sympathy, or fear. During my first training session, Vicente explained how the use of names can be a great sales tool. If you call on someone named Baltasar, look through the encyclopedia to the letter B. Okay, Mr. Baltasar, let's find the meaning and the history of your name. And then you find a country that begins with the letter B. Let's see now, Brazil, what a vast country, miles and miles wide. And then an animal like a buzzard or no, a buffalo is better because no one likes to be compared to a buzzard. A buffalo inspires positive images of, a Western, of Western movies and adventures. And then you move on to anatomy. Uh, and you talk about the importance of the brain, which starts with a B, as do the names of Pope Benedict the 15th or the poet Gustavo Adolfo Becker or just to touch all the cultural bases, the legendary bullfighter Juan Belmonte. See what I mean? It's the power of the letter. And if you really want to close the deal, find out ahead of time what your esteemed client's profession is. If he's military, you'll get a lot of mileage out of the word battle. And if he's a doctor, look up blood pressure. And if he's a priest, depending on his personality, you can thrill him with the article about basilicas or move him with the plight of starving children of Biafra. Sí, everything starts with a name. It's fantastic. <laughs> Now, second passage. 
In this second passage, Leon, alone at the weekend, frustrated, agitated, and embarrassed by his lack of success with his new love interest and as a salesman, practices the naming strategy on his own by pretending to pitch an encyclopedia to Leo Tolstoy, whose novel, Anna Karenina, he is currently reading. The effort ends humorously as Leon becomes irritated with the word game and in a larger sense with his own inability to do anything about what he calls the great indifference of society. Luis? Si. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> ¿Quieres leer en español? Mire usted. Sí. Perdóname, Katy, es que había visto solo el primer fragmento. Puedes continuar. Lo tienes ahí. ¿Qué, qué, qué página es? Es uh, la página 40. 40. De la novela. Ah, muy bien. Mire usted, Lev Nikolevich. Mire usted, Lev Nikolevich. Conde de Tolstoy, señor león, mamífero carnívoro perteneciente a la familia de los félidos, conviene mucho saber que hay otros animales que empiezan por la letra L, como el leopardo, que es también muy fiero, aunque no tenga una melena en la nuca. La L está en nuestro cuerpo a través de los lunares y en el cielo gracias a la luna, la literatura, Maestros como Luis de Góngora, como Fray Luis de León, que tiene una doble L en el sosiego de su vida retirada, o como León Tolstoy, usted sin ir más lejos. Y quien dice en la literatura, dice en la historia, porque hubo muchos papas que se llamaron León y muchas reinas que fueron bautizadas con el nombre de León, y un revolucionario de su mismo apellido, Lenin, y leyendas interesantes que necesita conocer un hombre letras para que en sus libros aparezca la tierra africana de Lesoto y los palacios de Letonia y las sequías del Líbano. Para la mala vista, nada mejor que unas lentes, para la lectura nocturna, una linterna y para la sequía, litros litros de líquido elemento. <risa> Un párrafo más. ¿Qué le, voy a decir? ¿Qué le voy a decir yo a usted, León, esto es un ejercicio propio de los lerdos. Un lerdo es como un tonto escrito con la L. Una letra maravillosa para pensar en el huevo del piojo llamado liendre y en la enfermedad llamada lepra y en la mano manchada del efa y en las mentiras que aquí se cuentan sobre la palabra libertad y en los problemas de limpieza cuando falta el agua y en la mala suerte de Santiago de Liniers que fue un marino francés del siglo XVIII, tuvo la infeliz ocurrencia de hacerse español y acabó fusilado en el río de la Plata. ¿Qué quiere que le diga? Que no resisto quedarme aquí, en este piso de estudiante abandonado, y que ahora mismo me voy a la calle. <laughs> Fantástico. Me encanta. That's a fabulous uh, two paragraphs. Here it is in English. Greetings, Lev Nick. Kolevich, Count Tolstoy, I am Señor León. My name means lion, a carnivorous animal belonging to the feline family. It's important for you to know that there are many other animals whose names begin with the letter L. Leopard, for example, which is also a very fierce animal like a lion, but without a mane. The L is present in our bodies via the lungs and in the sky, thanks to light and in our literature due to novelists such as you yourself, Leo Tolstoy, and poets such as Luis de Góngora and Fray Luis de León, who had a double L in the serenity of his secluded life. And he who speaks of literature also speaks of history because many popes have been named Leo and many queens baptized with the name Leonora. A revolutionary from your very own country was named Lenin not to mention the many other interesting legends an educated man knows because his library has books about the landscapes of Lesotho and the palaces of Latvia and the droughts of Lebanon. If your eyes are bad, use lenses. For nighttime reading, use a lamp. And for a drought, liters and liters of liquid. What can I tell you, Leo? 
that this whole exercise is really for losers. A loser is an idiot spelled with an L. The L is such a marvelous letter, so useful for thinking about lice or leprosy or a handful of seminal liquid or lies they tell about the word liberty or life without running water or the bad luck of Santiago de Liniers, the 18th century French naval officer who decided to become Spanish only to be executed later in Rio de la Plata by his adopted countrymen. What more can I say, Leo? I can say that I'm going crazy in this empty student apartment and I'm getting out of here right now. Fabulous, fabulous uh, extract. So one of the things I love about this novel and I enjoyed in translating it is the wordplay, which is fun and funny throughout. But the narrative is also thoughtful, insightful and inspiring. So this is a novel that will appeal, appeal to many readers. If you enjoyed these excerpts and would like to learn more, please follow me on Twitter at KTKING and message me. I can provide you with all the information that you need. So thank you very much, Luis, for taking time to read. Muchas gracias. You're welcome, Katy. Gracias a ti. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.